Hey guys, what's up, Matt here. I was on TikTok, I typed in sales tips and hacks, and so I thought it'd be fun to kind of go through and see the good, the bad, the ugly of what TikTok reckons the right way to make sales is. The oh, powerful sales technique I've ever found in the whole history of my sales career this that has literally been responsible clients. for hundreds of millions of dollars. I'm also gonna give you some examples towards the end of the video. And the technique is this. It's using analogies during your sales call. So I'm his sales coach. So Jeff knows what he's talking about. He's talking about uh, analogy selling. The reason why analogy selling is so powerful is because everyone makes themselves the protagonist in every story. Like when you watch Thor, you're like, man, if I was on Asgard, like I'd be Thor. It's like, no, you fucking wouldn't. You'd be the sales guy on Asgard trying to sell people into fucking coaching and consulting programs, right? <laughs> Like that's that's what you'd be, right? You're not Thor. You're not a fucking superhero, right? So if you use analogies, you can say hard truths with people um, through the use of like third parties, and they put themselves in the position of the protagonist of the story. So, and here's why it's so powerful: the human brain thinks in pictures. If I say pink elephant, you do not think about the words. What you see is an image of a pink elephant. So if the brain understands everything we're saying in images, it makes sense to put what you're trying to sell and the things you're trying to explain and get context over into images. So it works a bit like this. Let's say during a sales conversation, somebody is really pushing you on price. They don't want to go through your process. They're just like, how much does it cost? Tell me what the cost is. You're saying, well, look, Dave, I'd love to tell you the cost, but we've got a range of services. And at the moment, I don't know what problems you may or may not have to know if even what we do would fix it. Dave's playing hardball. He's... It's a good deflection whenever it's a really good deflection because there's certain parts in the sales process where you just cannot give... You cannot give the price there and then because there's no value attached to it. There's also no problem, no solution. So there's no urgency in order to do it. So all you'll do is no matter what you say is you'll get sticker shock. Sticker shock will ruin any deal no matter how no matter how good you've done um, because like it takes them out of everything and they're just like, oh, what's happened? So that's, a, that's, that's the deflection that I would use. It's going, look, I don't care about any of that. Just give me the cost. What works really well here is to use an analogy, which would sound something like this. Dave, look. If you went to a garage or a mechanic and said, how much to fix my car? Sweet. So I, I, I taught him this analogy, right? And basically what it is is you go, it's, it's a way to put things back on them where they can understand it from their own perspective. So I would say, okay, let's say Pat, uh, like you're a dog trainer. Yep. Okay, sweet. How much to fix my dog? And you go, well, I don't, I don't know. Like what's wrong with your dog? You go, blah, 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 blah. hey man, I'm super busy. I just want to know how much it's going to cost to fix my dog. Right now, two types of people there. One person will go a thousand bucks, right? And then you go fucking sweet because I have this super high level all singing, all dancing Malinois that's just had 17 puppies and I need that dog completely fixed and ready to go into a family in two weeks, right? And they're going to go, whoa, it's going to cost more than that. It'd be like, hey, no, but you said like sign on the dotted line, right? Um, or they're going to go, ah, okay, I understand. And then you've got them on board and you've now implanted the idea that it's okay for them to know more about, that they need to know more about their customer. So it's not unreasonable for you to know more about yours. Sales tactic that has directly made over $35 million. One day I'd sold a bunch of people into a, a new program that was starting. And I was probably like 15 orientations deep and I just headed no after no. And finally, I was sitting down and this nice lady walked in. She had like a nice ring and a nice purse. She sits down. I remember getting to the end of the presentation and I just said, hey, so with the program, you want chocolate or vanilla for your protein? And she was like, which one do you like? And I was like, chocolate. She was like, all right, I'll take one of those. For the, the pre-workout, do you want to- Okay, this is a classic option close. Right? Uh, Hormozy is very good at giving uh, sort of very tried and tested techniques um, in sort of a story form, right? Which is a form of selling in itself, selling with stories. Now, it's classic option close. I'm not a fan of it. The reason why I don't like the option close is because I think that it, it um, I think, I don't think it gives people enough credit right? Like you're kind of saying, it's like the yes train. The yes train is nonsense where you get nine yeses in a row. Therefore, the 10th one will definitely be a yes. You know, um, I, I, th I don't think it's giving people credit because you can do all the steps that he's about to say, which is like, do you want chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Do you want the large or the small? I want the small. Do you want the 12 week or the 24 week package? The 24 week package. Okay. Do you want uh, twice a week or three times a week? I want three times a week. Okay. So you want this, 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 and this. Yes. Okay. Perfect. 
perfect, that'll be 2,497. They're still going to go, ah, like I, 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 <laughs> like, I don't think it works the way that people think it works. I've done a lot of sales with a lot of individuals, and I've found that there are times when an option close can be successful, but as a process, I don't, I don't think it's optimal. Sales by just changing a few words, part see. two. Change from free to complimentary. Here's a complimentary. Change from features to benefits. The key well, be okay. First of all, features and benefits are different things. Like a feature is what you get. The benefit is what you get from it, right? So like you can't interchange them. You can change what you're talking about, but you do have to give the feature and then the benefit and then sort of the problem that it solves for them. But it does bring up a good point. I know I've only watched about 10 seconds, but it is TikTok, so fuck it, that's how it rolls. Is that there are key word changes that you can use to immediately get a better outcome. Like for example, saying contract versus agreement will change the game for you. So. Uh, especially people who, who do more B2B, authorize agreement is a far better way of saying sign the contract. Sign the contract has a level of finality to it and like, I guess, legality. Whereas, oh, hey, if you could just authorize the agreement, everyone likes authorizing agreements. Nobody likes signing contracts. Benefits of our service are change from objections to concerns. Do you have any concerns with this approach? Follow for more tips. Here. The concerns ones is good, but I think that's, to be honest, like, why why you would ever say objection I, I don't i don't think anyone would say that like okay so your objection is that you you money it doesn't make any sense to me but i mean it's not bad advice. three tips if you want to get better at sales and this could apply for dating is literally the same thing let's get you paid and let's also get you i'm not saying the other word tip number one believe in yourself or the product or service that you're selling conviction is so powerful if someone believes in something so much it will make you question your own beliefs it's like an ugly guy who's confident he will talk his shit and he's probably more comfortable in his looks than half the good looking people that are insecure if you believe in what you say you will act in accordance with your beliefs this is all i do agree with that i think um you're i think you have to sell stuff that's good so definitely don't believe in bad stuff. But I think that uh, one, one thing that I see a lot of the time is if sales reps, like they just, they go through a massive downturn. It's because like the business owner has, for example, asked them to do collection of failed payments, or they've asked them to do saving calls. A lot of companies will call them red calls. Um, so it's like people who are incredibly unhappy with the service, and then they're going to get a salesperson to try and sell them back into it. That is a really, really bad idea if you're a business owner, because like, or you're going to have a salesperson's handling complaints. If a salesperson loses conviction that the product or service is going to be, uh, is going to be beneficial, unless that salesperson is a sociopath, it's going to be very difficult for them to continue to sell it moving forward. Also why you shouldn't sell shitty products or bullshit courses because you know they're garbage don't do it tip number two you need to set the frame who is the authority in this transaction just because you're the one selling does not mean that you need them if anything they need you they okay so that i agree and disagree with so setting the frame um i don't know that i agree with that because i i think i think that's a pretend thing that salespeople who don't have a very good process need in order to like, um, how do I explain it? They, they, they need it to make themselves feel better. So like you're, you know, especially if you are a salesperson who's not selling, like let, let's just say you're selling um, like a coaching package to learn how to do something, like a, like a marketing package, right? You know, it's like, you're not the marketer, <laughs> like you're not the authority there. You don't know how to do that. Um, so there's certain questions that you can't answer, certain questions you should never answer, um, and you don't have the skill set in order to actually provide it for them. So that whole setting the frame thing and the authority, I think that having an equal status to the person, like you don't ever want to be like below them in status, but you don't really need to be too far above them in status, I don't think, in order to make a successful sales transaction. So I don't think that like setting a frame where you're the authority is needed if you have a good process. I have a problem and you have the solution. You are here to help them, but you do not need them. And there is a saying that summarizes this so well. The person that wins a negotiation is the one that needs it least. And tip number three, embrace rejection. I'm not saying it's always going to happen, but be okay with it. If you play the game, you're not always going to win and that's fine. Learn to love. 
that's pretty good advice. I think uh, a lot of salespeople get caught up in the nose, but a lot of that comes from not knowing their numbers. So I would change that to know the numbers of which your skill set is currently at, and then aim to increase those numbers incrementally, right? Because if you, one, one of the problems that I see is that sales reps think that they convert at 60%, but they convert at 30. So like in reality, and because they don't actually track it, so they have a feeling or they feel like they get this objection, they feel like they close at this rate. You can't make adjustments on that. So if you know that you close two out of 10, then you shouldn't be shocked when the eight say no. Here's two things you can say to get around, I left my wallet at home. The first thing you do is you don't actually ask for someone's payment first. Instead, what you do is you ask them for their ID. So they take their wallet out and then they'll hand you their ID. You'll write down their information and say, cool, let me swap you for whatever card you want to use. Now at that point, they can't say they left their wallet at home. But let's say that for some reason they say like, oh, I left the card that I, that I wanted to use or whatever. No problem. Do you have your phone on you? Cool. Why don't you pull up your banking app, go to your statements, and then we can see your account. Okay, so what that, that's actually great advice, especially for anyone who sells in person. I I used to do that when I sold in the gyms, right? That's exactly, that's funny. I've never seen that TikTok before. Uh, that's exactly what I would do. And what, what I do now that I'm in like the online selling space, because you can't do that. I guess you can do that in online selling, but on Zoom, in order to make the person feel really comfortable, I'll usually add the credit card into a series of information that I already have. So I've confirmed the sale. They want to move forward. Yes. And I go, sweet. Hey, just confirming your full name is this. Perfect. And what's your address? I'll ask for their address. Okay, perfect. And your email is this, correct? And your phone number is this, correct? Okay, perfect. And what's your credit card number? So like, I'm, I'm, I, I have a lot of information. It's just part of the information that I'm getting. So which is the same sort of thing, which is, I think this is great. Number on the top right, and we can write that down. And we can do an ACA transaction, just like that. Here's two things. Also, the second part of that, which is also good, which I really agree with, is never being flustered by anything. And in sales, the moment you get flustered, you lose sales. So <laughs> I, I used to take down people's banking details with no ability to actually take the payment. So because it, it's, it's, it's an emotional buy-in, right? <laughs> you know, I used to always say like, oh, you don't have a credit card? Sweet, bank account. Don't have a bank account? PayPal? Cash app? Venmo? What do you want? Like, like, where can we go? There's no way that I'm not getting some sort of commitment. Um, and so I would say, hey, it's not a problem. What we can do is just go BSB an account and we can just do a direct debit. They go, you can do that? I go, yeah, it's not a problem. Um, they go, sweet. They'd give it to me. Then from there, I'd call them back a few hours later. Go, hey, man, just checking in. Did you receive the emails and everything? Yes, perfect. Hey, man, did you manage to find your credit card? Yeah, I did. Okay, perfect. Weird thing. Um, you know, we never, that sort of bank account thing didn't go through. Do you mind if I just grab your card details? And then bang, because like people will find any reason to not move forward because no matter what you purchase, a lot of the time you get this like weird buyer's remorse thing, even if it is the best thing for you. So I just don't want to put them in a position to where they feel like they haven't committed. So what do you do when a prospect you've been talking to is just like ghosting you, like not getting back to you? It's so simple and I see so many salespeople screw this up. They write like this four paragraph email about their problems and solution and the prospect never ever gets back to you because nobody has time to read long emails. So what you wanna do is you can email or text, all right? And you're simply gonna say this. Hey John, tried to reach you a few times but didn't hear back dot, 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 dot. Then you're going to scroll down two spaces. You don't want to like big, long paragraph. And you're going to say, where should we go from here? Question mark. And then you're going to hit send. And that's it. You do that. You're going to see 80 plus percent of your people will respond back. And they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. So obviously Jeremy, my mentor in sales knows what he's talking about. Uh, the reason why that works is because Jeremy is a big believer in status frames, right? So he, he will never be below status so he doesn't chase prospects he does this follow-up he doesn't chase people though so all of his communication is done in a way where it's like you know like i've got this over here if you want to be a part of it that's great and so when when he sends emails out it, it, they're very cleverly worded to where uh, even though you're following up with them and you're kind of chasing them it seems like they're kind of missing out on something uh, or they're doing something wrong and that they should be getting back to. It works very, very well. You want to know how to get your way without making it seem like it was your idea, but in fact the other person's idea? 
It's called mirroring and something that I learned from Chris Voss, who is a very skilled negotiator. Essentially what mirroring is, is just merely repeating the last two or three words of a person's rebuttal to you. So in sales, a common rebuttal would be, mm, right now is not a good time. That's not the point of mirroring. That's like, I don't think she read the book properly. The point of mirroring is to get more information, right? So it's not to get your way. It's to get more information so you can have a better understanding of the person's perspective and, and place. So if someone says now isn't the right time, you would say not the right time because you want to probe deeper. But the reason why it works so well as a technique in sales is because it's simple and doesn't require lots of words. Um, so what a lot of salespeople do <laughs> is, is they'll go, okay, so, so what you're telling me is that now isn't the right time? Help me understand. Like they'll they'll like regurgitate what they say and then change it in the phrase of a question where it, like it's just too long and very transparent. Whereas mirroring is just a much easier technique. Um, but it's not to get your way. That's not what it's for. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that content. I, I think the wrap up is there's some good, there's some bad, there's some ugly on TikTok. You know, definitely find the people of which you resonate with the most and then just follow them, watch their stuff and try and get what you can from it. But if you want to like learn some actual sales techniques, then we'll, we'll put a video here. So if you like this stuff, subscribe, comment, notification bell. And if you want to join the closing code, go down below 50 bucks a week, role plays, sales training, go on.